If you're doing a PC build on new hardware and want to use Windows, you're likely going to need a key. At least if you want to do things, let's say, officially. And if you're like me, you're still using Windows 10 in protest of stupid things like Microsoft account requirements. Unacceptable! Unacceptable! And also against the mysterious circumstances surrounding the disappearance of our national treasure, Clippy. Now, this might also work for Windows 11. I think that if you have a Windows 10 key, you can use it to install Windows 11, but I haven't tried it. Like I mentioned, I'm not using it. And I don't know that this trick will work absolutely, so I don't want to guide anyone in the wrong direction. But that's something to keep in mind if you want to look into that on your own. But that being said, if you're buying an official Windows 10 key from a chain type store, you can expect to pay anywhere from $80 to $100. And and that's a lot of money, so why not pay the same price or even less for your key and, in essence, get a free computer out of the deal? A lot of you watching probably know where I'm going with this, especially if you're familiar with my, let's say, preference in computers. Instead of just buying a Windows key, what you could do is buy an older Office-type PC with a Windows key tied to the motherboard. There are a lot of older computers that are still really solid machines. For example, this, the HP Elite Desk 800 G2. It's a computer model that I still use today, and it's way more capable than a lot of people would expect. Most importantly for this video, every one of these I've ever gotten has had a Windows key tied to the motherboard. These computers are commonly sold on eBay for around $80, which already is about the price of what you would pay for the key by itself. If you were to buy a PC like this that has a key tied to the motherboard, you could retrieve the key by going to the command prompt, typing this command, and if you can't read it, don't worry, I'll put it in the description as well. And then you can write down that key to have it for the fresh install you do on the newer computer. Now, technically speaking, you're only supposed to use this on one computer at once, and also, since you're installing Windows on this new build in the first place, you're probably not going to need it running on anything else. So, what to do with the old PC? Well, you've already pulled your Windows key, so now you have a computer that is free for projects. And there's actually a lot you can do with an older computer like this. Computers like this one specifically, the Elite Desk 800 G2, are a perfect example of a machine that is still useful for a lot of things. It can run up to a sixth generation processor. You'll typically see it with the i5 6500 or the i7 6700 and it runs DDR4 2133 megahertz RAM. So there's several things we can do with this computer that you may still find useful that don't involve Windows. For example, if you wanted to say learn Linux if you haven't already, this computer would be perfect to run as a dedicated Linux machine. You wouldn't have to mess with dual booting or virtualization and all of the resources Resources would be dedicated specifically to running the Linux operating system. Another thing you could do is drop in a couple old hard drives, install something like OpenNAS or TrueNAS, and use the device as a home server of sorts. As you can see in our example here, there are two caddies for 3.5 inch hard drives and one for a 2.5 inch hard drive. So you could theoretically fit a fair amount of storage in the system for a personal home server. And if you're lucky enough, you might even avoid being launched into a pool noodle rage, such as I was when I attempted my home server build. Yet another suggestion, and this is also something I really like to do, is that you could install Botticera and turn the device into a retro emulation machine. On this model of computer specifically, these older computers that, they're not so old that they don't have a Windows key tied to the motherboard, but they are still several years old. I found they have no problem running most PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and even GameCube games when it comes to emulation. So 
they're a really good option for something like that. Or if you're not interested in learning any of those things or doing any of those projects, and you have no use for the computer whatsoever, you could even just strip it down and sell the components individually. You might even find that you can cancel out the cost of the computer itself and in the end essentially have gotten a Windows key for free. I'm always looking for ways to keep these perfectly functional older computers out of landfills when there, there's still a lot you can do with them. Especially if you're on a budget, a lot of people don't realize how much the sort of used PC market has to offer. Anyway, that is all for now. I really appreciate, as always, everyone who's been watching. Thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you later.